When you look at Mother Durga, the philosophy of Mother Durga, and especially Hindu philosophy, in Hindu philosophy we speak about one God, Ekam Sat. There's a Vedic uh, saying that says, Ekam Sat Vipra Bahuda Vadanti. So Ekam means one, Sat means truth. Truth meaning that which is indestructible. So Hinduism, when we speak about truth in Hinduism, we're speaking about the immortal, the birthless, the deathless, that which got no beginning, no change, but yet because of which everything is enlivened and everything changes and evolves and eventually reaches that peak of realization. So one truth, saints and sages call it by various names. And when we look at Vedantic philosophy of Purusha and Prakriti. Purusha is the universal person. Now, universal person here yes, symbolically means the Atma. The Atma is universal, Sarva Vyapak, all pervading. So, and Prakriti is the manifestation of the divine as tangible, objective world that we see, smell, hear, taste, touch through the five senses. And we interact with this tangible universe through our five senses. And this, it is these five senses that are the gateway of knowledge. And when it is said in Devi Mahatmyam, Ya Devi Sarva Bhuteshu Vishnu Mahati Shabdita. She is that power of divinity, the power of Bhagwan that keeps us in ignorance or delusion. She deludes us. And when we appropriate her, when we worship her, and when we surrender, sharanagati, she removes that ignorance and enlightens us and we become free. So when you look at uh, Mother Durga, she is Shakti Mata, Shakti. So that Shakti hasn't divided itself. Shakti doesn't divide itself because God is indivisible. We, we, you cannot divide the Atma. The Atma is not a tangible object. So she manifests as the three Shakti. Brahma Shakti, which is creation, Vishnu Shakti, which is preservation, and Shiv Shakti, or Durga Shakti, which is destruction. So she manifests, she is not three Shakti, separate entities, but different functions at the different stages as creator, as preserver and destroyer. So when we talk about Brahma be creating, Brahma creates through the intervention of uh, Saraswati, that Shakti. When you look at uh, Lord Vishnu preserving and uh, keeping the world in a state of balance, that we call Lakshmi Shakti, that, that power, that innate power within Lord Vishnu to preserve that, sure. yeah, that is called Lakshmi. And then that power in Shiva to destroy, not destroy in the sense of negative connotation, but in the sense of in a positive way. He destroys that which is inauspicious and he substitutes it or replaces it with that which is most auspicious for you, for your environment, and for the entire universe. So you like that. There's always destruction taking place. There's always destruction. Without destruction, there is no evolution. If one looks at the analogy of a fruit, a fruit. Now, before the fruit appears, you get the bud. The bud must die away. The bud must get, dis must get destroyed. So, its nature or the, the, the way of the divine that the bud becomes the flower. The flower must die away for the fruit to appear. So the fruit appears and when that fruit is mature, ripe, it severs its link and so that process of evolution is recycled, it is uh, continued. So when you look at Durga, she is Shakti. When you look at Purusha, Prakriti, like I said, or Shiva and Shakti. Shiva is symbolically the Atma, that which is 
one in all, one without a second, meaning that which is timeless, that which transcends the boundaries of space and time, body, mind and intellect. So that is why we call the Atma transcendental reality, that which is everywhere, but to perceive it or to experience the Atma is not an objective uh, effort. It is subjective effort. Subjective means with the mind intellect. Uh, when the mind reach, intellect reaches a very intense stage of purity, then we, through our sadhana, through the process of, in Kali Yuga, say, Kali Yuga Keval Nama Adhara, Sumira Sumira Nar Uttarahi Para. In this Kali Yuga, the name of Bhagwan is sufficient to purify the mind and the name of God is portable. You can take it anyway, in any condition, just hal me, just desh me, just desh me, whatever condition, whatever state, or whatever place you are, you can go on. And so what, what chanting does, chanting is a stepping stone to meditation, to realizing God. It purifies the mind. And a purified mind becomes a fit instrument to meditate and have intimate experience of the Divine. So coming back to Mother Durga and Shiva and Shakti or Durga and Shakti, uh, Shiva and uh, Durga or Shakti. Shiva symbolizes the Atma, symbolic of the Atma, the Atma. And that vibration of that Atma is this tangible universe. And this universe we don't call Father. This earth we don't call a father, we call mother. Why do we call this visible subject, or objective, sorry, objective universe mother? Because everything is generated from this universe, from the earth. Everything exists in this domain through this earth. And eventually it becomes earth again through the five elements. So, Shiva is Atma, and the vibration of that Atma is Shakti. And that Shakti, like I said, is called uh, Brahma Shakti, Saraswati, Vishnu Shakti, uh, Lakshmi, and Shiv Shakti, Kali or Durga. So all of these three are not different entities as such. They are one function, they are one entity, but with different function, like my body. My eyes, my nose might be different, but they are all integral part of me, the who I am. One, with, one, uh, one, one part of me that is uh, compromised will affect my general well-being. So that is Shiva, Shakti or Purusha, Prakriti or Atma and this manifested the universe. And who are we in relation to this Atma or this Shakti? In the scriptures it says Tattomasi, Tadavat, I am Atma Brahma, this Atman is Brahma. Meaning, you are that, you are that. And this is a function of Mother Lakshmi, Mother Durga, Mother Saraswati. When we intelligently employ this God-given gift called a human birth, and there's a process we call first Shravanam. Listen, listen, Shravanam. Then Mananam, meaning whatever you listen, you don't be gullible and swallow it. You establish truth. See how much of truth that's called Mananam. And then Nididhyasanam, meaning you meditate on that. Merely, merely stuffing the mind or intellect with knowledge, just intellectual knowledge, is not going to give you the desired result, which is namely self-realization. Self-realization, we talk about self-realization, meaning the self, who am I? I am the self, the Atma. And because of your ignorance, because of our ignorance, we live many births, many births you and I, we have had. And so this ingrained thought or idea that I am this body, mind, intellect, is carried over in successive births. And that is where when one looks at that, the painting here, 
and you see the lion devouring the buffalo. Now the buffalo is symbolic of ignorance. Ignorance. When ignorance, ignorance is a quality that uh, m most times will keep you in the lower rungs of evolution. And it can buy you a whole catalog of problems. And the lion here now must have the force of knowledge like that of a lion. When you got merely having that knowledge is not sufficient to register progress as far as evolution. That's the purpose of human life. The purpose of human life, number one, to be happy, 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 peaceful, blissful. And, and the ultimate purpose of this human life, not to run away, not to give up anything, but just reorientate your position in this life and get to know who am I, that I am divine. So when you got knowledge and one applies this knowledge, then you destroy this demon called uh, Mahishasur. That called, buffalo is called Mahishasur. And Mahishasur in Devi Mahatmyam is symbolic, like I said, of ignorance, ignorance. And Mahishasur, this ignorance had the power to play havoc with you, manipulate. So when you, when you look at an individual coming, outwardly he might look dressed in suit, boot and tie, and he might look very smart. Only through his or her action, one will get to know really who that person is. The person uh, is known through their action, not just cheap words, not just talk, not just speech, but through their uh, whole action, their attitude. So when you see a person come dressed in suit, boot and tie, that might not be a saint. He might come dressed, but through his action you'll get to realize that that is an unwholesome, unhealthy uh, uh, acquaintance. And such people we don't need in our life. It is said, show me your company, show me your friends, and I will tell you who you'll be in the future, in the near 10 years, in 20 years, in 30 years. So when you look at that Mahishasur, ignorant, when, when you get an ignorant person, because they're ignorant and they, the mind is in a secular mode where money, wealth, glory, name, fame, all of this becomes the end all and be all of their life. And to achieve their end, such people will do anything. And that is why, that is why we said, we first, when we're starting off this life as a, as a child, as a uh, youth, as an adult, it's safer to em empower yourself with knowledge. Knowledge that will uh, make you, uh, that will give you the understanding of who you are. And once you get to know who you are, then the rest will become visible to you. So when you see a Mahishasur coming, you're immediately able to recognize evil when evil is coming. But because we're in this mode of ignorance, when evil comes, it embraces us and eventually it destroys us. So that is Mahishasur. And this Mahishasur has the ability, if you look at Devi Mahatmyam, he had the ability of changing his form continuously. And so people, when they, uh, when they, Powered by lust and greed and anger, three gates to hell, lust, greed, anger. So you, they will manipulate, they'll manipulate you for their own selfish end. And that is Mahishasura, Mahishasura the demon. And the lion is knowledge. When you got knowledge, you become the lion in, in, in adversity, in good time, in whatever time. They say, knowledge is your friend here, yeah? and here after, meaning in this embodiment, in this birth and in your next birth. We might deny the theory of reincarnation, but it is true. It is true from experience. And if you, if you go on social media, if you go on media on the internet, on YouTube, and you type reincarnation, you'll see that reincarnation affects everybody, whether you're a Muslim, whether you're a Christian, whether you're a Hindu, whether you're a Buddhist. It is documented fact 
in, in the Bhagavad Gita, documented fact in the Vedas, and it's also documented by various people, white, black, Indian, colored, Chinese, you will see. So when we understand that this is not the only birth, and that our saving grace is actually knowledge, and stepping stone to wisdom means knowledge, application of the knowledge. And so when through tapas means penance, penance means sacrifice. Sacrifice meaning God help those who help them self. I've given you this wonderful instrument called the body, mind, intellect. I've given you the shastra, the scripture, the Bible, the Quran, the Gita, what have you. Now, you take this two, you put it together and make effort. Nothing comes without effort. But you call it in Sanskrit purusharta, personal effort. And so when you, when you finally sit down and meditate on that uh, reality, you'll find that the first thing that happens as you meditate, initially of the process of meditation, you'll find that the mind is running amok. There'll be a thousand inauspicious thoughts. So that we call a purification process, a purgation process whereby initially the, the, all the uh, worldly thought, all the inauspicious thought will manifest and it's being purgated, it's being burnt up. So there'll come a time as you progress in a month, two months, three months, depends on how much of vasanas you've got within you, tendencies of worldly tendencies. Eventually over a period of time, like a glass of impure water, dirty water, muddy water, so when you take a stream of clean water and you continuously pour it into that tumbler or that bowl in a, in a matter of, in a process of the time, in the duration of time, that water begins to recycle and become translucent and pure. So just like that, that's the process of sadhana. Sadhana means, sa means divine, dana means wealth. So the divine wealth that you inherit or you acquire is purity of mind. Because the subtle, the most pure, sukshma, sukshma in Sanskrit it's called, is that subtle reality called God. And you are that. And you don't know that you are that only because you are impure. Pure. Impure, I mean, I don't mean you are bad. Meaning your mind is uh, conditioned by ignorance in making you believe that I am this visible structure, body, mind, intellect. So as you go on and the mind becomes pure, then when the last thought dies away, the mind becomes like a lamp in a windless area. So when that stage is reached, after that when you continue this process of meditation, then the mind will suddenly transcend it will transcend this limitation called body, mind, intellect, when your chakras open, your seven chakras, and this is muladhara, and this is sasarara. And one gets to experience firsthand your own true nature, which is divinity, atma. That which got no form, no size, no color, no shape, no gender, no inside, no outside, no big, no small. That dawat, that dawat, that dawat. And this is the grace of Bhagwan or the mother, God is mother. When we speak about the fatherhood of God in Hinduism, there is a motherhood of God. In fact, there is a verse which says, Tomeva Mata Cha Pita Tomeva. Why we, we revere mother as greater than the father? Like I said, because everything is generated from her. When she becomes this tangible, universe, this visible earth, everything is generated like this is the womb of all existence, our womb of all existence is this earth and that is why we need to respect the earth, respect the earth and uh, keep it clean, uh, nurture it and when we, when we do that, that's greater than just doing one worship of Mother Durga. The greatest worship is Seeing this divinity as this tangible, visible 
universe. And when we can do that, then we learn to live. Then we learn to live when we understand who I am, who the world is, and who every other thing is. This triangular relationship. Then we live and we'll let live. But before that, it will be about I and my. And that is why I said initially, when the mother graces you, God as mother graces you, then you know that you are truly graced and that is your last birth. When the mother frees you, in fact, no avatar came, means a manifestation of God came, whether it was Satya Sai Baba, whether it was Shaddi Sai Baba, whether it was myself, whether it's a great Mahatma, nobody came, but nobody came and took avatar without the will of the mother, a god as mother. And everything that happens, every single thing that happens in this universe, including the looting that we had recently, all the trouble that we have in Afghanistan, all the trouble that we got in India, everything happened by her grace. Her grace meaning she keeps you in ignorance because of your indifferent attitude to life. And then when you worship her, again she endows you with knowledge through various means and you, she frees you. So when we got this broader vision of the mother, then we will live in harmony. There will be harmony, there will be peace. When you look at this picture, the background is, the background is dark. Not totally dark, but you know, mediocre. And when you look at the mother, it's bright, bright, bright. In uh, February 27th, Monday, 2012, I used to talk about Mother Durga. I used to read the Devi Mahatmyam. And Devi Mahatmyam is 700 verses or 12 chapters on Mother Durga. And I should say to the mother, Mother, my knowledge is so dry, Mother. So dry. I'm speaking about you. I'm giving discourses on you. But I didn't have an interaction with you. I know that you said must see everything as, as nothing but God, divinity. Whether you want to look at his mother or father, or does it matter? But I didn't have darshan of you. I mean, literally with his eye, you didn't manifest. And truly, after my meditation, in February 27th, Monday, 2012, my meditation, quarter past five, my meditation broke. The mother appeared, manifested herself in front of me. And we all live with this perception that I do, I do. And I know that I don't do. How I know this? Because she locked my body down. I couldn't move my eyes, couldn't solve a saliva couldn't move my lip, couldn't do nothing. I was sitting there with my eyes open, couldn't talk. And I'm, and I'm like a fighter. I never say die. So in this life, you have to be a divine uh, soldier and never say die. So I was saying, hmm, hmm, hmm. Because she, she was manifested herself and she was right here, just a few uh, centimeters away from me. And her eyes and my eyes like became one. And she gave me this most cynical smile. And I'm sitting in, in like Padmasana, the, uh, no, sorry, Sukhsana, the normal position in meditation. And for the first time I realized really what belongs to me and where this power comes to do everything. Then I realized, true, oh mother, oh God, it is you that does everything. There's one song I'm reminded of. It says, Prabhu Aap Ki Daya Se Sab kaam ho raha hai Karte ho tum kanaiya Mera naam ho oh, Basically it means Oh Lord You are the doer You are the giver of everything It is through your grace everything gets done But I in my blinded ignorance Believe that I am doing I am I, I, the individual I am doing So that the first time I realized that I do nothing, although I read it, but now that knowledge that I had was consolidated in my intimate experience of God. I don't need anybody to teach me anymore about God. 
or read a chapter to me because I experience it firsthand. And I should say, Mother, you know, there's another song that I used to sing. It says, Mere sar pe rak do maya, apne ye dono. Oh, Mother, bless me by placing your, your both hands on my head. And that is not any mean achievement for something like that. How many can tell you that God manifested and placed a hand on my head? When my physical mother, who I treated like Durga, by the way, when I was employed as a fitter in Chasso, my mother was on the last lap, she was passing on, that was in 1990, in November. I said to my mother simply, Ma, I might not be the best child, but nonetheless, you are the mother and you are most forgiving. Whatever wrong I did, please bless me, forgive me and bless me. So my mother with her right hand, she placed her hands on my head. That is 1990. Come 2012, February 27th, a Monday, the mother, she locked me. She, like I said, I could do nothing. I was totally at the grace of Bhagwan. And once we get to know that, that my life is totally at the grace of Bhagwan, then you're going to awaken. Utishta, you know Utishta in Sanskrit? You're going to awaken. You know, awaken from your slumber. And the mother, I see this hand coming. And now everybody fears because they think they're going to die. Because you think that I'm the body. But really, only the body dies. You're not going to die. You're the immortal Atma. atma. Uh, like Sadhuji, Sadhu Rangarajan says, his famous saying, uh, Amritasya Putra. You are a child of immortality means you are immortal being, you are immortal being. You are not this, not that, you are immortal, immortal. So I see the hand of the mother. My physical mortal mother, mother, she blessed me with the right hand. And an hour later she passed on. Then in 2012, I see this hand coming, this hand, and it fell on my head. And the moment the hand fell on my head, I broke out from that experience. And I was terrified, I was crying, I was laughing, I was smiling, I was rolling within myself. Truly, when God realization comes, you become like a madman. People don't know it because they only read about God. When you experience this first time, intimate experience, have this intimate experience, then you realize, like Ramakrishna and all this, uh, Ramana Maharishi, all these saints, I know it full well because people say, oh, you are mad, you are mad, you are mad. I said, exactly. My madness will give me peace, bliss and liberation, while your madness will keep you in bondage, ignorance and trouble. So that is symbolically Mother Durga and everything is in the hand of Bhagwan. And when she, when you are graced, then you become then you become such a person, become a blessing to your community, blessing to your society, blessing to your country, blessing to, in fact, this entire world, and such a person becomes a blessing to this entire universe. Anybody, whether you realize or not, that engages in sadhana, whether you're going to church, whether you're going to mosque, or you're going to temple, such a person is a blessing of, uh, in disguise to everybody, in fact, to this entire universe. Such is my conclusion. Namaste.